Bonjour, mesdames and messieurs. In this episode, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on shooting correctly a panorama. Bonjour, mesdames and messieurs. My name is Serge Ramley. I am a French photographer living in the romantic, beautiful, crazy city of Paris, France, and in the sunny city of Los Angeles. And I make two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to get a raw file of this episode, or click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In this episode, I want to show you a little trick that's very easy to do to shoot better panoramas. Let me show you this right now. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So today I want to talk to you about the different ways we have to shoot panorama. Now, in an ideal world, you would be the owner of a Nodal Ninja 5, which is what I have here, which is the best. The reason why it's good is because it enables you to shoot the panorama on what we call the nodal point. And why do we need a nodal point? It's just going to make it so that when we stitch the panorama, we'll have a lot more sky and a lot more land, and we won't have to crop it too much. We'll get more information. And I'm just going to show you the difference once we are in front of the computer. So, I want to make a panorama of Los Angeles with a golden hour. It's, it's a great scene. I'm at the Griffith Park, and it's just beautiful. The sun is coming down on my right, so I've got a lot, a lot of sun there. It's very bright, and here it's much darker. So how do you do this? Well, the best is first to go into like AV mode. So I'm going to go to AV mode and I'm going to measure the sun. So I'm, I'm measuring the sun here and it says I'm at ISO 50, which is the lowest I can go with my camera. And it says that I need one 640 per second at 6.3. That would be the correct exposure for that. One 640 per second, 6.3. If I don't change anything, and I go here, so I'm still at 6.3, and I take a measure, and there it says 1 100. Okay, so I got 1 100 of a second here, 1 640 of a second. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to manual, and I'm gonna take half. What's half between 100 and 640? Roughly 250. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to manual, and I'm gonna go at, I've actually put it in already, at 1 250 of a second. I'm using a tripod head, which I showed you earlier, uh, where you can put different increments. And what I did is I put 20 degrees. So I'm going to move and it's going to stop every 20 degrees. And 20 degrees is going to give me about 30% of overlap between every photo, which is what I need. So that's perfect. So I'm in manual mode. I'm at 6.3, 250 of a second, autofocus, raw file, and I'm ready to shoot my first photo. So I'm going to take a shot. Boom, and just, I don't have to think about anything. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is that I put this, this is completely, the, the ball head is completely level. I'm gonna take a second one, and I just keep on moving. So I'm a bit, I'm a bit dark here on, the, uh, on this side. Okay, now the camera has trouble to autofocus. Let's see if it does a good job. Yeah, it did a good job. Let me zoom in. You can check some time to make sure you're sharp, because I'm focusing in the sky and sometimes it can give weird results. Let's see. Yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. And I'm just, I keep on going there. And voila. So I took a whole bunch of different photos and um, I should have the best stitching possible because I shot with the Ninja Nodal and I'm on my nodal point, which I've said before coming here for that specific lens. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot this like what most people is doing, meaning a regular tripod and a real regular bowl head. Uh, the, the issue is that we're not going to be turning on our nodal point. It's going to be a bit different. It's going to be a bit wider of, of, of an angle. The only thing you need to worry about is make sure you have an average, which I did. I know this is like about 100th of a second, here 120. So I'm going to shoot at 150th of a second. I'm going to have an average exposure. And I just make sure that I'm overlapping 30%. So roughly, boom, and I'm moving two photos, three photos, four photos, five photos, six photos. And voila, it's a different technique, it's much easier, and now I'm gonna show you by hand. So the two last ways I wanna show you how to make a panel is by hand. This is what most people will be doing is by hand. And I'll show you a little trick that could be useful to make your panels stitch better. It's of course, it's better to do it on a Ninja Nodal, but if you don't have it, this is how you do it. So, um, I made sure this is here. If I go to the AV mode, okay, uh, this tells me that I'm at 1 60th of a second. 
where this is very bright and here it tells me that I'm 1 25th of a second. So I'm gonna go in the middle, plus I know, I don't know if you know that, but to get a sharp photo by hand, this is a 35 millimeter prime. It's better to be around 150, 160 of a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to manual, 160 of a second, I'm already on there. And I'm gonna show you the, the wrong way to do it, which is what most people is doing. What most people is doing is like this. They, ha they have a movement like this, okay? So I'm gonna do it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now I'm gonna show it to you how you should do it. You take your thumb and you put it where the nodal point is, which is usually in the middle of the lens, and you try to rotate on your thumb. Okay, and you will see the difference. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Voila, and now let's go over in the software to see the difference. All right, so to show you the difference of stitching between all the different uh, photos that I took, so here is, uh, I imported them into Lightroom, and this is the, uh, that's the first photo, um, that's the first series of photos with, which is with the Ninja Null, then it's with the uh, regular tripod, etc., etc. And I, there is a, a software that I'm using, it's called Autopano Giga, uh, which is really amazing from Colors. Actually, Colors just got bought by GoPro, uh, if you go to my gear page, you can see here there is a link for Autopano Pro by Colors. You can click here on the link. And um, if, uh, if you're really are serious about doing auto, uh, auto panos, uh, sorry, panoramas, that's really the software to go to. And I'll show you a little bit why. For example, uh, I've exported all the panos into Autopano. And here we are in Autopano G. And you can see all the different ways they are being stitched. Now, the first way that's being stitched is with the Ninja Noodle. You see how, how much sky we have and how much uh, ground we have. It's, it's quite a lot. Let me show it to you uh, in, uh, in a bigger screen. You see, we have a lot of the sky and we have a lot of the ground. Okay, now let me show you the one from, that's the one from the tripod. So I'm gonna show you from the tripod. The tripod, the tripod is not so bad. So tripod is not so bad. It's just that my level was not good. So I was going down a little bit. So we're missing a bit of sky, but it's not bad. Okay, now let's check by hand. Now, look at this. By hand is a whole different ball game. You see how I did with, if you do a big rotation with your arms, you see how much sky I'm missing and how much ground I'm missing. I would have to crop this photo uh, here and I would lose like literally 30 to 40% of my panorama. Big difference. And now the last but not least, the, the sun technique. Look at the sun technique. It's not bad. I get most of the sky and most of the ground. So to recap, the, uh, the best, of course, is a null way. And then we have the, uh, you know, uh, the second best is probably uh, with the sum. And the third best is with the uh, tripod. And the worst is by hand, like, unfortunately, most people. I've been doing panels for years. And for years, I was getting this, this circle here and this circle there. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? How come I'm missing so much sky? How come I have to do this, you know, contour aware feel all the time? And and uh, you know, use a stem tool to, 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 to fill in the, the, what I'm missing. And um, so I'm gonna use uh, Autopano to uh, stitch this photo. But first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, and that's, what, that's my workflow, I'm gonna retouch a little bit in Lightroom. So I took the panorama, which is the one shot with the Ninja Noodle, and uh, I'm gonna retouch it. So usually what I do before going into Autopano, if I really wanna make a nice, Panorama, I usually don't use the Lightroom options, which is really cool, but when it's a bit too complex, when there is too much photos, I'd rather use Autopano because I get more option, and you'll see why in a second. So I, I'm going to go, for example, here in the middle, and uh, I'm going to open up the shadows. I like to see the photo in the middle, and I'm going to bring down the highlights. That's very surprising. You've never seen me doing this before. I know, it's crazy. And then I'm going to Hold down the slider, go to the right here with the white, hold on the Alt key until I reach something that's very 100% pure white. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the blacks, holding the Alt key until I reach 100% pure black. And uh, I'm gonna work a lot on the white balance because that's one option I love the Lightroom CC is that you can do the panel in Lightroom and choose the white balance afterwards. When I work with Autopano, unfortunately, I have to decide now. But it's a sunset, it's a golden hour. I have a little trick for golden hour, which is I like to go shade and add a bit of magenta. Yeah, that's my workflow, I know. That's my signature. 
magenta. Okay, uh, then usually what I do is I also enable the profiles correction. That's going to take vignette effect, very important for panels. We move chromatic aberration. Maybe I'm going to make it a little bit darker, just a little bit more dense, and I'm going to do a little minus clarity on this one because I don't like when uh, there is too much clarity, actually. And I'm going to select all of this, and then I'm going to synchronize everything that we've done so far. Boom. And then I'm going through to see if the color matches everywhere, if I like the mood, if I like it, and actually like it. So now I have all my photos selected. I'm going to right click, export, and I'm going to go to Autopano Giga 4.0 in uh, JPEG. And that's going to launch the software and import it in Autopano Giga. All right, so I'm going to click on detect, and uh, it's going to detect the panoramas. And one of the reasons I love this software, so you see the stitching is perfect. I'm going to click on edit. All right. And uh, one of the things I love about Autopano is that it's got, on Lightroom, you only have three projections. You've got like um, 10 on, uh, you know, on Autopano Giga. So on this one, I would go, uh, Mercator could be interesting. Uh, Panini could be interesting. Well, Panini, no, because you see, I would be losing a lot. Uh, Mercator or... Uh, planner no you can just try different things and this is really good when you make architecture photography or interior design panoramas this software is amazing for that on this one i think i'm going to go for mercator and i'm just going to take the cropping tool which is here and uh and crop it okay uh i'm going to crop it there all right and then i'm going to render it and on the render i'm going to take the anti-ghost uh, which is really cool because it really makes uh, often I have mistakes with Lightroom that I don't have when I'm using this and you see how big it is it's going to be 18,000 so and then I just click on render I've already done that and this is the final result uh, of, of this panel pretty cool panel from Los Angeles sunset golden hour I like it but the whole idea was to show you why it's good to work on a tripod or to use a sum technique and not to uh, make a too much of a large circle i'm going to give you these raw files here so you can play around with them and see for yourself hope you learned something and i will see you in another episode